Hi everyone, Monica Moore. I'm a nurse practitioner and a health coach at RMA of Connecticut. And this episode of Ask Monica, we're talking about something I'm really excited about, which is what kind of exercise is good for insulin resistance. So if you have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, you likely are insulin resistant. But there's a lot of other people that are insulin resistant and don't realize it. So this insulin resistance can lead to something called impaired glucose tolerance, which can lead to something called pre-diabetes, which can lead to diabetes, but it can also lead to a host of other not good metabolic effects. So in terms of exercise, so I will always say that whatever exercise you like and feels fun and maybe playful and that you're going to keep up and sustain is what you should do. Um, I want, it's a lot of times we're like, well, I should do this and I should do that and I have to do this and that kind of never works out. Um, whatever form of exercise that you think you can stick to. Um, I do want to though talk about a particular kind of exercise called HIIT training, so high intensity uh, interval training, where you get to almost close your max heart rate or close to it for short periods of time and then you stop and then get to it. Um, a lot of people might do this in terms of an exercise class, a spin class, working with a trainer. And um, I think, you know, HIIT has gotten a really good reputation as being good for burning calories. After a certain point, you can burn fat, and that is true. But what I find when you're insulin resistant is that it can make you very hungry afterwards. So insulin resistance affects our brain in a way that skews our hormones, where it makes us not feel full as quick as we should. We feel hungry all the time, even though we shouldn't. That is actually real. And HIIT, um, or high intensity, interval training can actually make you feel with insulin resistance, and this is somewhat my experience, and starting to be a little bit supported by the literature, but it's difficult to really study this, hungry the rest of the day. And um, and that can be very frustrating because it's the thought is I'm exercising probably not only to feel good, but to lose a little bit of weight to so being hungry rest of the day um, can make it so that the exercise, uh, it feels like you're exercising just to eat more, and that's frustrating. I wanna to talk to you though about the kind of training that I recommend for the people that I work with and that I do myself, and it's called zone two training. So zone two training is, um, it's basically uh, moderate level training for longer periods of time. So as opposed to high level, high intensity training, short periods of time, moderate intensity training for long periods of time. What is long? It really depends on what you're doing already. So a lot of the research will say 45 minutes. But if you aren't exercising, then it might be 15 minutes. If you're kind of exercising, it might be 30 minutes. So what you wanna do in terms of how to get to the zone two is if you looked it up online, you can go look up your age and then you can figure out what your uh, max heart rate is and then you can take 60 to 75% of your max heart rate to figure out where your heart rate should be and if you're wearing a smart watch, that will calculate it for you. But what I do is I tell people to think about it in terms of their rate of perceived exertion. So how do you feel? And at zone two training, the best way I can describe it is you're really unable to hold a full conversation without pausing for breath. So it's not like you're pausing for breath between each word, that might be too much. But if you're able to kind of get part of a sentence and you need to stop and take a breath part of a sentence, you're probably pretty close to zone two training. And zone two training has been known to uh, help improve insulin resistance. It might help lower blood pressure over time. It has a ton of cardio metabolic, positive cardio metabolic effects that are worth um, looking into. And it also, in my opinion, is easier to do. So yes, it feels longer, but you don't feel so breathless that you uh, dread doing it, or it feels so hard that you dread doing it. When you dread doing exercise or you're worried about exercising, you release stress hormones and stress hormones can cause your body to hold on to fat, particularly belly fat, which is exactly what we don't wanna do, which kind of brings us back to our earlier discussion of whatever your movement practice is, it should be something that you like, something that feels fun to you, something that you look forward to doing. You can certainly mix it up. It doesn't have to be the same thing all the time. And I don't, and what I always say also is, don't think you need to have a formal exercise practice. You need to have a movement practice. So when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna to say to yourself, how do I want to move today? Not, am I going to be able to exercise? How do I want to move today? And if you want some ideas about this, uh, or you want to talk to us, please contact your nurse or navigator. She can get a hold of one of us, the health coaches. We can either talk to you or send you information about this. It's really, really, really important, both for your mental and physical health, to have a regular movement practice. So hope this helps. 
Uh, as always, send us your questions or concerns and thanks so much. Have a great week.